Kalzinga. Hey guys, Valerie here. Let me tell you about cows. Cattle are large domesticated cloven-hoof herbivores. They are a prominent modern member of the subfamily Bovinae and the- No, I mean the company, Cows Inc. They are a place in PEI that sell ice cream, chocolate, and most relevant for today, t-shirts. See, their building is decorated with posters and such with parodies of different media, but with cows. Remember friends? They're cows now. Star Wars? Nah, Cow Wars. Doctor Who? Doctor Moo. And they sell the designs on t-shirts. I originally had the idea to make a video or live stream where I rank the parodies on how cursed the images and how good the pun is. Because trust me, a lot of the images were cursed. But you have to just trust me because the most cursed image that inspired the video in the first place is gone. In Christmas of 2012, I was gifted a shirt from cows.ca with a cow version of Phineas and Ferb. I found the design unsettling and so almost never wore the shirt, instead electing to stuff it in the back of my closet. I would eventually get rid of it on account of wearing it like twice in my entire life. But when I went on the cow's website recently to find a picture of it, I found they no longer offer the shirt. Which honestly makes sense. Barring Dan Pobenmeyer's TikTok, Phineas and Ferb is over. So of course they discontinued the parody shirt. So I googled the name of the shirt. Finna Moo and Herd. Yes, Herd, with that unnecessary silent E. I don't even know why they put him in there if they're not going to pronounce it. It's just a waste of a good letter. That's what it is. The result? Just a TV Tropes article from 2012 that listed a bunch of cow's parody shirts. Nothing else. So what else is there to do? Well, what else but to go through every single archived version of the page displaying used t-shirts on cows.ca. And did I find Finamu? Uh, no. Maybe it would be in the kids t-shirt section? Once again, no. Of course, I definitely had the shirt, and it came from cows. So the only explanation is that cows sold the shirt in its stores, but not on its website. But what about the other shirts mentioned in the TV Tropes article? Are there records of them? Movatar, Diary of a Wimpy Cow, Super Murio, Hannah Moon Tana, Pirates of the Cow Rebian, and Angry Herds were all listed on the used t-shirt section. Buzz Lightsteer, Madagascar Cow, Horton Hears a Moo, and El Moo were listed in the kids t-shirt section. Hello Cowie was also listed on the website's kids section, but not until February of 2015. Well, the TV Tropes example was added all the way back in 2012, showing that Cows Inc. sometimes wait years after they make a parody before they put the shirt on their website. But there are still a bunch of shirts listed on TV Tropes that weren't on the website in the period I went through. So I Google searched every single one. Sponge Cow Square Moo is mentioned on multiple blog posts from 2005, but nothing really after that. In 2005, there was a court case between Viacom and Cows Inc. over Sponge Cow, as well as Moo Viver and a Moosing Race. I was, however, able to find an Imgur album of someone wearing the shirt. Mooey Griffin and the Backyard of Cows only pulled up TV Tropes itself. May the odds be heifer in your favor was mentioned on a blog, which included a photo. Finding Nemo is a pun that's been made by a different company selling merch. Moose Clues is the name of a fictional ice cream store in the show Bob Burgers, and also a real-life pet grooming place that no longer exists. I found Oz Cow the Grout, but it wasn't Cows Inc., it was a completely different website that just also sells pop culture-based cow puns as merchandise. Taylor Swift, Deer List, Cow Scene Investigation, Top Cow, and The Amusing Spider Cow are all still in stock. Justin Beefer and iCowly were reposted to Pinterest. Lady Moo Moo is a real-life ice cream shop in New York City. The pun Britney Steers was used in an Argyle sweater cartoon and a shirt sold by a different website. This one doesn't specialize in cow puns, it was just this one shirt. Mickey Moo is the name of an actual bull that injured its owner, and the name of an actual cow with a spot that looks like the Mickey logo. Kai Moo was posted to a subreddit dedicated to hating the reference fictional child. I found a photo of High School Musical on a website where someone gave it away. Lizzie Moo Guire was mentioned in a Reddit comment, and on the Encyclopedia article about Cowie Potter. Winnie the Moo is a random person's username, and what someone called a cow doll they sold on Etsy. There are literally thousands of results for Steer Factor. It's the name of a driver's ed course, and Steer and Factor just happen to be words used often in discussions of engineering. A comment on Guy Online from 2009 mentioned Madagascar along with other cow shirts, including the never-before-seen Jonas Brothers. Speaking of which, Jonas Brothers is mentioned in a Yelp review for Cows Inc. with no pictures. All other results are just misspellings of Jonas Brothers. So that's the state of things. 14 of the designs listed on the TV tropes are lost. Some of them aren't mentioned anywhere on the internet. Well, they are mentioned in one place on the internet, TV tropes itself. I looked through the page's edit history and found the original person who added the list of cows parodies, Spinosegnosaurus 77. 10 years ago. Thankfully, he was still active, and after I messaged him explaining my quest, he responded by posting an album with photos of most of the cows parodies mentioned, including Mooey Griffin, the Backyard of Cows, and of course, the Nemoo and Herd. The pictures were not of shirts, but rather posters from the Alberta location of Cows Inc. 
So now I can make the ranking I mentioned at the start of the video. Of course, if I ranked all the shirts, this video would be 20 minutes of me just going, Yup, that's a cow. So here are some highlights, by which I mean lowlights. Hello from the other side. Good pun, but the image... Why is her dress lopsided? Why is her left arm bent like that? Why is her lipstick go past her mouth? Why is this a shirt people can purchase? Couches Corner. Great pun, however, hoof thumbs. Cowie Potter. Oh man, if only there was some cow-related word that sounded like Harry. Unfortunately, since there is no such word, we'll have to make our Harry Potter parody, Cowie Potter. There's just no better option. Mooey Whatever. Mooey Christmas is a good pun. Mooey Whatever is not. Who says Merry Whatever? The more common generic holiday greeting is Happy Holidays. And they changed Christmas to whatever, but the art is still specifically Christmas. The Grinch stole Christmas, he didn't steal whatever. That's a Santa hat, not an insert name here hat. Fifty Shades of Hay. This is a t-shirt. They made this with the expectation that someone out there will go out in public wearing a Fifty Shades of Grey cow parody that looks like this. This. The Incowable Hulk. He is incowable. He cannot be cowed. He's just kind of a green gradient blob with little differentiation of body parts. Tim Holstein's Double Double. I know it's two cows, one which is front facing, but it really looks like this is one cow with a second head on its butt. Twitter, follow moo. Imagine a bird, but instead of feet, it has an udder. Now please stop imagining that. And now, parodies that have never been seen before. Not really, but they were never on the website. Once again, big thanks to Spinosignosaurus77 for sending me these. Sponge Cow Square Moo. Two puns, and neither of them are puns. And then the art is this. Dairy tales do come true, and it's a picture of Shrek. Oh man, if only there was some famous line from Shrek that include the word fairy tales. Perhaps the opening line of an iconic song from the soundtrack used in the movie's finale. Unfortunately, there is no such line in Shrek, so the caption has to just be a phrase that has no connection to Shrek, aside from the fact that it's technically a fairy tale movie. Mooey Griffin. Good pun, most cursed art. Why is he flesh toned? Why is his tail flesh toned? The backyard of cows. I was gonna say it had good art. But then I noticed the kangaroo kid had four ears. I'm wowie and I know it. What is this? I saw another version of this on the archives of the website with the text, I'm mooey and I know it. Why is it wowie in this version? And finally, the one that started it all, Finamu and Herd. Finamu is not a pun. Herd is kind of a pun, but why the extra E? Why do they have their udders out? Finamu's nose looks really bad. Also, both of his horns are on the same side of his head. Perry's nose. Now you may think this is the end of the hunt. We found all the parodies, right? Not exactly. First, there are a handful of parodies not on the website that are mentioned online, but have no full pictures. These being Lizzie McGuire, Brittany Steers, Moo Viver, The Amusing Race, and Jonas Brothers. Second, there are a bunch of parodies that were on the website, but not anymore. And although the title is archived, they either have no surviving image, or the image is of low quality. Such as Sydney Cowsby, Guitar Heifer, and Gangnam Cow. Third, given that many of the parodies documented by Spinosignosaurus 77 were not listed on the website, it stands to reason that there exist parodies listed by neither cow.ca nor TV Trope, such as, say, Moo Chirama or Cow Community. And really, given how a lot of the puns are not even puns, they could have had things like Mooing Bad or Pan's Cow Brain. If you happen to have a lost cow shirt stuffed in the back of your closet or a vacation scrapbook, feel free to send a picture of it to me and I may make a follow-up video. And as always, Cowzinga.